Hello, my friends. That's right. Today, we are going to talk about a match that I was in recently in Progress Wrestling. And I'm going to be that guy. You'll have to forgive me, but there is a link down there in the description for Progress On Demand where you can watch the entirety of this. And if you use the code SIMON, you can get 20% off your subscription, whatever you want to call it. And the only reason I wanted to get out there super early is because I'm only going to show snippets of the match here. And if you can support my wrestling matches and you have the money, if you don't, don't worry about it. And you can help support Progress Wrestling. Well, that's just good all around because independent wrestling is pretty darn good. Just to catch you up to speed, though, Oh, yes, back in January 2022, I was very privileged to join Progress Wrestling as their host. Still one of the coolest things I've ever been offered. And just as these things go, because of course I do wrestle as well, over time, we fell into a story with one Tate Mayfairs. Now look, I don't want to get into it too much. I don't want to be that guy again. It's the second time I've said that. Me and Tate do kind of... <laughs> butt heads a little bit but that kind of translated to an in-ring feud which is pretty cool because sometimes it's good to use reality in your pro wrestling storylines whatever you want to call it a year build is essentially what happened because back at unboxing which is progress is really cool big show where it's all surprises i was the host for that night wearing an elf costume because i have no shame and when tate came out for his match surprise <laughs> it was me in my elf costume and i speared his ass <laughs> Then throughout 2023, we had a bunch of matches. There was a six-man tag, and we had a one-on-one -on -one where he punched me in the face with brass knucks and knocked me out. Simon! Oh! Where I cut a little bit of a promo a few weeks later after I'd knocked him out with brass knucks to teach him a lesson. And I was like, hey, man, if you want to cheat, because in our first match, he had won by the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment surprise roll-up. And he held my tights. And again, he'd used a weapon. In our second match, I was like, fine. Well, let's just make everything legal which is what brought us to December 30th in the ballroom in a damn street fight. No rules, no countdown, no disqualification. Anything goes, it's a street fight. Oh, oh just, oh, oh. Crushing that door with the body of Simon Miller. And again. So you've just seen me being thrown into a door, which... I will talk about in just one second. But I'm going to be completely honest with you because I think that's what makes these videos so interesting, or at least I hope it. I was so damn nervous before this. And as I realized after the fact, it was just because I got in my own head. I mean, humans are so damn weird. But I decided, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this, and I'm not going to be able to be a success, and I'm going to regret it, which was basically kind of moving the goalpost so that if it didn't go how a lot of people hoped it would do, because very coolly there was a lot of buzz about this, I could be like, ah, oh, I knew it. Now, actually, what happened is I had the best time of my life, and I was kind of annoyed after afterwards because like, oh man i should have done so much more but look life is a learning experience life is a learning curve and now i know the next time someone tries to throw me into a door try and make sure that it breaks now i can't tell you exactly why the door didn't do this i mean somebody mentioned to me it needed to be at a different kind of an angle and that may be true but once again i'll, I'll level with you i quite like that it went this way because most people expected the door <laughs> why are we using a door resting is so dumb but i love it mostly people expected the door to break so when it doesn't break and when you watch it back you see my stupid bald head go right into it in many ways it actually creates more of an impact and the second time it didn't break and the third time it didn't break and the last time Tate just climbed up the top of tier the turnbuckle and he stomped me under a door many people have asked me well how did that feel Miller well I tell you it didn't feel great I also want to point out that you should check out Tate Mayfair's as well, as well as everybody on Progress Wrestling, because they are all superb sports entertainers. But yes, we will now build to what most people have probably tuned into this video for. We involve thumbtacks, of course, there is an expectation in wrestling, and Tate and I wanted to live up to that expectation. So earlier on in the match, this happened. Simon Miller fighting out. Up, yes! set, down! Then later on in the match, this happened. Two up, two oh! seven, now I will leave it up to Tate to tell you how he thought it felt, but I was once again pretty damn apprehensive about being thrown into the thumbtacks, but I'm going to be a right ass here. You'll have to forgive me. Something happened after that fall, which was the highlight of the entire match, which I'm not going to show here because, again, I want to make sure that I'm promoting and supporting progress as much as I can. But in terms of the actual move itself, it's... So beforehand, once again, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But when you're in there and when you're kind of laser focused, you're feeling the adrenaline, and you're feeling the crowd and bless the progress audience, they're so kind to me, which again, gives me a lot of confidence. Wasn't even thinking about it. My main thought process was... I want to get up as high as I can on this damn suplex. And then whatever it feels like is what it's going to feel like. I just want it to look devastating. Because again, brains do funny things. And you've probably heard this a thousand times. I think Stevie Richards did a video about thumbtacks. I swear it was him. And he kind of said something similar. You don't really feel it. Because again, you do have a bunch of adrenaline. You do have a bunch of momentum. And your brain is just going a thousand miles an hour. So when you go in there, you're aware that a bunch of pins... <laughs> 
just stuck in your ass and you're back. But you're also like, oh, okay, let's just move on to whatever the hell the next part of the match is. Now, actually, the worst part is when you go backstage, and for me at least, I just said it. A lot of the pins, a lot of the thumbtacks were in my bottom. <laughs> Somebody had to pull them out. So you're stood there. You're a, grown, you're a grown man. Someone is pulling these pins out of your bum. You're just like, ow, 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 ow. And look, my back was all bruised up, etc., etc. But I was elated afterwards. Like, I had the biggest smile on my face. And I don't know whether that was because the match went well or whether, like I said, I just had a good time and I enjoyed myself. But there was this idea as well, because I'd be completely brunt with you too. I wouldn't do this kind of a match if there wasn't justification for it. Again, that's an argument people love to have on social media. But we had put a year's worth of build and a year's worth of story into this. And there'd been twists and there'd been turns and there'd been weaponry you. So when I looked at it, I was like, this is absolutely how it has to peak. This has to be the end of the story. It makes all the sense in the world. I think that tied in as well, because it's like anything. If you're reading a good book and the story gets you emotionally and you're invested in it, that's much better than just turning a page and then he died. What do you mean he died? What happened? Again, you need that build. You need all that preamble. I like to think we did a pretty good job with that. So when you are taking all of these moves, like, yeah, this is what these two characters would be doing to each other. But yeah, that's the absolute truth of it. You go into, you're like, oh man, that wasn't so bad. And then five minutes later, when you're backstage, you have calmed down a bit. You're like, oh, it absolutely sucks. And it did kind of feel like I've been hit by a car for a couple of days. And this is going to sound bizarre, but not in a bad way. I mostly had a massive smile on my face. I mean, you tell me, I can't explain it. Now, the other thing I do want to talk about, and this will be the final clip that I do show you, is we did indeed do a spear off the stage. Yes, into a bunch of waiting, of waiting people. But you know what? Watch this. No, 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 no. Spear off! It was one of those things. I've never done anything like that before. It's always something that I, I want to do. And I know it's not as crazy as other things you've seen in wrestling. But once again, it's like the first time, if you're a wrestler, you'll understand this. You look at the top rope, you're like, man, that's not that high. Then you go to the top rope when you're up there, you're like, oh my gosh, it's really tall. Because of course, if you're like six foot or six foot one or whatever, all of a sudden your head is like, what, five foot ten in the air, whatever it would be. And it does feel like a long way down. And always when I'm on the top rope, I always think about the crazy stuff that we've seen. And we don't give people enough credit, including someone like Mick Foley that did that mad stuff off the top of the hell in the cell. So even though you are on a stage, and it, it probably not even as far as the top rope is, you still know there's a drop. And you also know there's a bunch of audience members that you don't want to take out. But it was the same for that one. I did my stupid copy of The Rock on commentary, which I always enjoyed doing, because hey, it worked back then. Why can't it work now? And then, yeah, you just run. And I just went, and it was freeing. Because sometimes in the past, mostly as I get better and I develop and I get more experience, even when I hit a normal spear in the ring, you kind of watch it back and like, man, you didn't really go in as much as you could. I mean, you don't want to kill anybody but you want to find that fine balance but this one i was like man i want everything here to look as good as it possibly can so i just ran and i just flew and yes you know just to let you behind the curtain which i shouldn't do but hey as i always say i've heard steve austin and bret hart break down their wrestlemania 13 match in the same room together so it must be all right the lovely people were waiting there to, to cushion our fall. And thank you to them. I think it's important to thank them as well, because without them, we wouldn't have been able to do it. But it really is one of the best experiences I've ever had in wrestling. And I think the cool thing was it happened at the end of the year. And now I've moved into 2024. And I'm really excited to see what I can do. And I've got all these plans. And I'm going to push it in different ways that I didn't think that I was going to do. And of course, there's a big uh, progress show coming up on January the 28th, I believe it is. The next show in the ballroom. And yeah, I'm cutting a big promo about my future in progress. And I think that's going to be pretty fun and pretty cool as well, because I do have a lot to say. I'm not going to tell you why. Slap your head. You'll have to watch the match. But once again, when you see the finish, you may be a bit like, what the flub is happening? Don't get me wrong. So was I. But yeah, I can imagine it wouldn't have been the same if we hadn't of tied it into all these little elements that we have told over the last 12 months or so, or really two years, or really actually more than that, because Tate and I used to have matches back in 2018, 19. So I do just want to take this moment to thank Progress Wrestling for the opportunity. And I want to thank Tate as well. Again, he's a massive goober and he'll wind you up till the, till the nth degree. And I do have, oh, I've talked about it in the promo video. That was all true. I don't want to talk about it now. So I want to thank him as well, because without him, it, it wouldn't have happened. So if you do watch it as well, if you go to Progress On Demand and you watch the unboxing show from a month or so ago, please do come and give me feedback. Like I've got quite thick skin. Even if you think it was a pile of dog, I'm happy to hear that. I mean, I'd rather you were constructive with it because I'll always take that feedback and try and put it into my wrestling so I can get better. But honestly, any kind of chatter or any kind of feedback or criticism or critique, positive or negative, I would massively appreciate. But yes, too long didn't read, which makes no sense because at the end of the video, going into thumbtacks, 
is actually okay. Now, please do click the video on the screen where I am talking about the Raw Rumble and who could possibly win it. And I tell you, that's more intricate than you may think it is. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. I've mentioned progress on demand. Make sure you use the code Simon to save that money. It's the same with Gorilla Mind, where you can go to gorillamind.com for slash Simon. Use code Simon, get 10% off. These are fitness supplements I use and massively support. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316. Come say hello and give me feedback either in the comments or Simon316 on that social media. Simon J. Miller on TikTok, Simon Miller on Cameo, and merchandise too. Pro Wrestling Tees and Samson Athletics new designs going up all of the time and yes i'm very excited about wrestling in 2024 like i say grand plans if you can come to a show and support me make sure you let me know so i can shake your hand and say thank you but otherwise keep enjoying wrestling it really is that simple see you soon don't bump into thumbtacks